before we get into things, I'm going to briefly cover off what BI is, just really quickly, for those in the room who might be new to BI. And then we'll dig into the new product features. So what are these new reports we're creating? What's the new product all about? And finally, we'll close off with future developments and when's the product available. So let's begin with the basic definition of what BI is. BI is actually pretty simple. It's just about taking the data that's flowing in through your organization and turning it into something useful. So useful information that we can actually use. So in our environment, this means capturing the transactions in RQ4 and turning it into something that actually makes sense. From there, we can take that information and use it to make decisions. Once we make decisions, we can expand our knowledge about our business. The key here is it's then actionable. We can make steps to head in the right direction of what we might want to be doing next. Where do I want to head or where do I want to go? A key component of BI is automating our report building process and also the distribution. BI today is an add-on service to RQ4, so it basically sits on top of the RQ4 platform. Using BI, your report administrators can automate what can otherwise be a pretty time-consuming process and distribute the reports throughout their various teams. This might be inventory, sales, finance, accounting, and so on. And those needing to view reports can also, also connect directly into the system to see the information that's relevant to their role. Today we find that our customers are predominantly using BI when their reporting needs extend over and above those of RQ4. Even though we have a lot of great tools in RQ4, we have custom reporting needs that are over and above what RQ4 offers. That's typically when our customers go outside of RQ4 and start building reports and analytics. So let's look at an example. If you chose to sit with me in this room today, lucky you, first off, um, this report probably looks very not normal to you. This is an example of a typical carrier scorecard. So custom columns of carrier specific data. A report like this would take hours for somebody to build, right? Because it takes so long to produce, it's often only produced once a week and sometimes even once a month. And by the time it's produced, the timeliness of the information sometimes is even stale by the time it reach, reaches the right people. BI makes it possible for you, with the right tools, to virtually reproduce the numbers you need on a daily basis and have this information in the hands of the right people. Automating the report, however, is just a part of what we need to do. If this report sits in our back office collecting dust or only reaches the regional level, if you guys are bigger organizations, we're only doing a part of what we need to do. We also need to share and distribute that information down through the organization. If we think about the sales team, this means from the VP of sales all the way down to the store with everyone connected looking at the same data. Once we've done that, we've automated the process and everyone's seeing the right information in a way that makes sense to them. They see their own personal contribution and that's when BI really has an impact. At this point, it's not just about automation anymore, it's about effect affecting how people are managing their day and also sharing and distributing becomes really important in this case. So let's review the impact of just removing, moving that one report from a manual process in Excel, for instance, into BI and what that could have on an organization. First off, we would save that person a ton of time. The person that's spending a lot of time today building that report can now focus their energies on a lot of more maybe high value things. 
But more important, across the entire company, people are connected looking at the same data, and they're looking at it in a way that's relevant for them. So the VP level can see his view company-wide, regional, their view, district, and so on, all the way down to the store. So people aren't scrambling anymore, wondering, what are my commissions? Where are my sales at? Everybody now just knows, and everything's flowing smoothly. The entire team is on the same page. This allows your employees to shift focus from being reactive and wondering, where am I at? What am I getting paid? To being proactive in how they manage their workday. This timeliness though, particularly if you're an executive in the room, goes a level deeper when you use BI to reducing the risk associated with big decisions. With BI, we actually have decision based on fact. You'll start to actually notice trends and patterns through, you, through your information. Big decisions often take a lot of time to research. We don't need to spend that time researching those decisions anymore. We have that information at our fingertips so we can move faster and be quicker. Eventually, what starts to happen is we start to think about creative new ways that we can use this new information flowing through the business. So I'm sure you'll agree that with just that example there, BI does create a lot of value. We looked at just one report for one team. Once a customer sets up a report like that and starts to get it in the hands of their sales, they start to experience that type of result. This often spikes questions like, is this possible in BI, Sarah? And I'll say, yeah, actually it is possible. And they'll say, well, how about this? And I'll say, yeah, that's possible too. Um, then sometimes I'll have to put them in check and say, yeah, that's possible, but BI will not cut your grass, do your pay payroll, or reconcile your commissions. The, the point here is you'll get to this point of automating with reports if, if you want to get to that level where the back office is just running really smoothly. But it, for a lot of customers it does begin with that basic sales example. But imagine that extending on to other teams as well. So that concludes the basic BI 101 introduction. Now on to the fun stuff, the real reason why everybody's here, to hear about our new BI product. Mike here just mentioned, I had no idea that you guys were even working on new stuff. This feels like an Apple announcement. <laughs> so um, I don't know who else here even knew we were working on new product, and I hope a lot of you didn't. But um, myself and Tracy here, who's going to join me in a bit, we're really excited to take you through the new product. It's really exciting. Um, it, it touches on a lot of what Marcelo was speaking today about connecting the front of the store across the organization and the ecosystem. For, like I said, for an existing customer, this is a brand new product. So a new front, front interface, new features, and for uh, a new customer, very much the same. So let's just get right into the features. Before I do that though, there's a few things that we just wouldn't compromise on when we were going through product evaluation. And they're pretty basic. First off, we wanted to keep things simple. Simple so that any user in your organization could connect in and it would make sense. Whether that means the person that's building and needing the tools to build reports, or the person that is viewing on the end. Maybe that's their store manager. We needed interfaces that made sense and tools that were simple and easy to use. Yet it could handle complexity. For enterprise users in the room, we wanted something that was technical enough to handle complex requirements. Easy. It had to be easy to deploy specifically. We were looking for something that would be easy to administer. So more of an out of the box deployment. Right? And then third, accessible. Accessible for everybody and expanding the reach of BI in your organization. So let's jump into the exciting features. First, we're offering a cloud-based service. This is web-based. Every customer is going to connect from bireporting.iqmetrics.net. 
A web-based connection means that this is truly accessible from anywhere. The load on the IT is going to go down significantly because there's absolutely no installer. If you put this in your browser right now, you'll see that you can access this website. Our infrastructure architect and I were swapping ideas about what web-based could potentially mean. This means this link could live anywhere that you guys need it. It means the reports that you build could be available where they're needed, even in an app. We're really excited about the expanded reach that this new tool is going to bring you guys. To make the login process as easy as possible, your users are going to log in with their first name, space, last name, at database name, with their RQ4 credential. So think about that. It's in the cloud, I'll log in with something I'm used to, my RQ4 credentials. And what we've done to secure it is we've locked it down to the RQ4 administration ID. And we've made it flexible enough that if we want to open it up beyond administrators, you have the ability to do that as well. Awesome. The screen, this screen shows us what an administrator would see with full access rights when they log into the system. First, notice the system is extremely clean compared to what we're used to today. We can access the ability to build reports and view reports right from one central place. So it's more of a console type feel, right? Everything in one place. A key thing to note here is as an administrator, I see what I have access to. So the user sees upon logging in what is connected to their security setting. This is very different than what we have today because today we're connecting uh, what the user sees based on the report, at the report level. Here's another example. This screen shows what a restricted view might look like. We don't want this regional manager to be able to build reports, but we want them to be able to send out. So now you guys are empowered to be able to set up role-based, if it's needed, security access. So John only sees what John needs to when John logs in. That's huge, right? Yeah. Don't worry, it gets better. <laughs> so if I'm this regional manager here and I need to be able to send reports out to my team, wouldn't it be great if I could email those? Well, now you can. This is one of the single biggest things people have been asking for, for as long as Tracy and I can remember. I know a lot of you today are relying on Google Docs, publishing to Google Docs, or exporting to Excel and sending out. But in both cases, we're relying on a person to make sure people get the information they need when they need it, right? Now, we can right click off of any report, whether it's something that we've built for you or something that you've built, and it can be delivered in the time that you need it to the people that need it just with a right click. This is going to have a big impact on you guys. Uh, let me just expand a bit more. Um, there's no need to set up an email server. All that is needed is a valid email address. The impact I see here is this will simplify a really complicated deployment to the point where one person could actually roll this out to say 400 stores using a group distribution list like I have here, East Region at company.com, West Region at company.com. Imagine how easy this is now. Just think back to that sales example, that sales report. If I need a view of that to go to my East Regional team, all I need to do is set up one email subscri subscription, base it on the time that I need it, Wednesday at two o'clock, because we have a three o'clock meeting. Tracy's shaking her head, this is unbelievable. <laughs> and it shows up in their inbox. 
And it's sexy. Yeah. And, and I can use that because that was one of the comments we got back from a customer when we sent this out to them. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're the one sending out data, just think about being freed up from that sending out that 5 p.m. report or you know that th end of month need to send the report out by the 30th so like cut that ball and chain off right take a vacation so Chris mentioned this this morning but this is the next logical thing web-based email delivery you better believe that we built our product to be mobile above all else even extending beyond the email delivery, mobile was the most important request from all of our customers when we were looking at a new product. More business is done on the device today than ever before. Reports are sized to work on any operating system, any device, phone or tablet. This includes reports we built and reports that you guys build yourself. And they're really good looking. <laughs> Here's a full size screen of a report that will come pre built in our new BI solution. Take note here the goal was not only to give you the ability to pull down a report, but to actually run it on your phone or tablet. So we're running a BI report on the device. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's like the last session of the day and please, I hope you guys are still excited. Uh, we, we provide all, we're going to provide all users here with the ability to retrieve and view data in a way that's relevant for them. Check out the parameters. What if I'm the store manager here, I want to just run it for my store. I'm the regional manager, I need to run it for my region and so on and so forth. We envision, envision the impact here to just be substantial for you guys as you're now positioned to connect your frontline staff with the operational tools they need with you in the back office to audit the behaviors. Let me give you a few examples of what that means. Say you're the person that manages RMA and you see that you have, I don't know, 45 open RMAs and you see what stores are responsible for those RMAs and you want to follow up with that store. You call the store and the store can instantly close off those four items that they see on their phone and they can actually see how old they are. Or what if we're the VP of sales checking out our sales numbers and we can see, hmm, the store's not doing so well today and we can actually engage at the store level. That's awesome. We're now connecting the back office or a senior executive with the store, a regional manager with the store, a store manager with the store, an inventory manager with the inventory team purchasing and so on. At this point, BI becomes operational. It's not just about reporting anymore. Combine that with the tools that you saw in the announcement like Pocket RQ, and this is going to have a really big impact. Here's a picture from our internal Facebook page from the day that we figured out how to do this. Uh, I remember the day clearly. This is uh, Andrew who joined our team this past year to work on the project. He's our lead. And Mahes, we work collaboratively on the project. Here's, although we can't really see the comments big, some of them say, wow, is this for real? This is amazing. We cracked the piece that allowed this to make it possible for you guys. It was a pretty exciting day. Delivering BI on the device is not an easy task in retail, and a lot of big companies are just starting to do it. And you guys have the tools now, and you should be really excited. So on to the next thing, security. We're connecting through the RQ4 user ID, right? We can customize our security role to the user if that's needed. The system allows you to do that. 
So I just want to touch on that for a second. You can see this screen here. Trent is a regional manager. I set up a regional manager folder and I can see Trent needs access to that folder so his reports would live in that folder. So as a user, if that's needed, we can set that up in the system here. When Trent logs in, then Trent only sees Trent's reports. So the thing here is it's very flexible for you. And if we need to make the security reflect what the user sees, it's possible to, to deploy it that way. I'd like to paint the picture of how distribution works today and compare that to how it works in the new BI. Remember back to that sales report we looked at earlier, defining the key carrier metrics for each of your stores? A lot of you are maintaining multiple versions of that report each time we need to segment security. So for example, we need to restrict California from seeing Oregon. This is a error prone process for a lot of you. It also takes extra time in building reports. I think there's a session at the summit this year called there's a solution for that. Uh, there's a solution for that in this new BI. <laughs> no, more, no longer will you be maintaining multiple versions. You're going to have one central place to make changes and if there's 98 copies linked to that report they'll all be updated in one place, dynamically. I think like Oprah has a My Favorite Thing show and I could just stand up here going, this is my favorite thing, this is my favorite thing. Um, I don't know what your favorite thing will be, all I know is there's a lot of great new things in this product. So I already touched on this, but the content can reflect security if that's needed. But another thing, I guess, just to touch on is, this is a Microsoft product. If you Google SSRS or Microsoft Reporting Services, there's books, there's websites, there's tools that will extend over and above the help file content that will provide you at IQ. So if becoming really specific on how you want to deploy things is something you need to do. Just now you know that this is a product that's really supported and it's Microsoft. I said that I would say these are my favorite things ten times. This really is my, my favorite thing. This product allows you to combine data sources. Reporting needs are increasing in complexity for everyone, whether you have one store, two stores, or 300 stores. You guys are being tasked with combining stuff, left, right, and center, columns of data, pulling reports, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, just to provide a couple examples, what if we needed to bring our ADP payroll data with our employee hours, or our commission information from RQ4 with our uh, carrier or our lost my the uh, chargeback information that we have and link those together right or something simple you have your target in a column in Excel because that's just never gonna live in our Q4 because I have too many locations and it takes too much time same with your customer satisfaction score it changes too often you can now link that in in this environment and once the report is built, it's just done. And you know, we can update the report if we need to with the columns of information. Just think about it like a giant VLOOKUP process. That's big. <laughs> if building your own BI project though is something you want to do, you can actually connect to us. So the data can flow both ways. So you can just connect to our data warehouse and build your own. So if you look at what we're offering here and you're like, hmm, I still want to invest in my own, you can do that. So data both ways, very flexible, awesome. This is probably a concern of some of you. Um, report building 
how does it work? Can I do the same things? Will it handle my requirements? Although we won't go into detail here, we can handle the same level of building those custom columns that you guys are used to as we handle in the existing product. So this screen might look really familiar from the current product. It's actually from the new product. So we wanted to provide a product that would expose the cube, provide you guys with a way to build custom measures, calculations, build if statements, case statements. People are very technical in this room. Also things like combining the data sources. So we can actually get the same level of report building in this tool. And the reason is, is we're moving from a Microsoft product to a Microsoft product. So the same level of report building is there, however the screen is more of a drag and drop and a bit simpler to use. If anyone wants to take a look at what it looks like, although it's going to be 2.30 and I don't know if anyone's going to want to after this, feel free to stop by the booth. I'm happy to walk anyone through it that wants to. So even with these great new features like mobile and simplified deployment, Perhaps the most exciting news that we have is we're including a package of out-of-the-box standardized reports, things that you guys expect, refunds, discounting, growth trending, on-hand inventory, category sales. So things that when you start on BI, you typically build yourself, we're going to include for you this doesn't mean we're taking away your ability to build your own. It means we're making it easier for you to launch. The idea here is we're making it easy to scale out BI through your organization and offering a high value suite of reports. These screens are actual reports that are included in the product. And I'm going to have Tracy join me in a minute here to walk you through some of the value and some of the ways you'll be able to use these new reports. But first, I just want to touch on two key things. Our goal above all else was to create a simple to use interface. The reports should be so intuitive that they don't need a help file. If there is a help file, it should explain ways you can use the report. Why are these metrics important? What does it mean? For inspiration, our designer of the interface looked to real world iconography. Think of things like airport signage, stop sign, things that are eye popping. On every screen, there should be a place that you can just see a yellow line, something that you need to pay attention to. On every report, you're going to see the use of a gauge that can almost be standalone. So as an executive or a manager, you can see this is really what I need to pay attention to. Second, we took a real creative approach in how we worked collaboratively on our team to development. For a report to be of any use, I'm sure that you guys will agree, two things need to be considered. One, what is its purpose? And two, who is it for? If we don't address those two fundamental things, we might as well not even bother building that report. But two, we took it a step further. We designed the reports from the perspective of what is the underlying question that the report should answer. For example, we have a growth trend report, is my profit increasing or decreasing? As an end user, you should be able to look at that report and understand right away, yes or no. From there, there should be a subset of actionable steps you can take. Is it because of my locations? Is it because of my products? Who's responsible? <coughs> On that note, I'm going to have Tracy come up. And those of you who know me well know that I love BI, but if there's a close contender in, at our uh, company, Tracy would definitely be it. Um, Christopher, our CEO, suggested, why don't we have someone from our customer-facing teams or our enterprise team come up and speak to the value of the reports that we're building and how the customer could use them. So 
I'm going to have Tracy walk you through the reports instead of me. Tracy. Thanks, Sarah. So I've, got, I've had the opportunity to work with some of you in this room, and so if you've worked with me, you know how much I love business intelligence. But we broke up. Because the new BI, I've been spending a ton of time with this new product, and it is so awesome. Um, you're going to hear awesome, exciting, amazing, a lot from me, and I'm really sorry. But I love numbers. I love m measurement because it matters, and measurement drives behavior. And I know some of you have heard me talk about this a lot and when you can take numbers that matter and put them in a format that makes sense to your employees get it in their hands in a way that's easy and in, t in a timely manner they're going to change their behavior both unconsciously and consciously so the fact that this new tool does all those things so easily comes with its own library of reports comes with its own library of reports Thank you. I'm just, I'm really, really excited for you guys for what this means. Um, yeah, so I think I have the funnest job. I get to walk you through some of the reports that exist. We're going to continue to build those out, um, but I'll take you through four of the ones that exist already. And so when you log in, you're going to see, I'm sorry it's a little blurry, but you're going to see a whole bunch of reports that exist in different formats. and. The reason that we we did it this way is so that you can start with these reports and you can modify them if you want. You can copy just like you would do any other file. This new product is really easy. So for the longest time we weren't able to do this. You know, everyone has different ideas about what's important. You know, I measure my, my quantity, I measure my profit, I measure I measure my regions. So you just we couldn't share the reports that we were building. Uh, the way that we've been able to do it is every report has a drop down at the top of it so you can build build your parameters right there on your phone, on your tablet, on your computer. You can pull the parameters and pull the data that's important to your company. You can also lock those um, in, a, in a variety of formats as well. So every report has drop downs at the top so you can pull the information that's most important. So this is one of my favorites. You might hear that a few times, but this is one of my favorites because the top and bottom performers report, it shows you what's working and what's not working all in one view. And previously it was really difficult to get that type of information all into one view in BI. And so now we've built this report that shows you, you know, these are the locations that are performing really well. You can run it by district, by region, by location, by employee, by product, so you can see, oh, this is what's working really well with this category or this product. Um, everyone with a sales responsibility should have access to this report. Uh, and you shouldn't, you should be running it on a regular basis. Don't be running this at the end of the month. This report should go out on, you know, day three, day ten, to see what's working and what's not working and what should I be changing ahead of the game. Because when you can get the information out to your employees in a timely manner that makes sense, they're going to redirect their behavior and essentially change the way that the month ends up. So I was talking to one client today who said, you know, I take an hour every Every morning to build a report and send it out. So I'm pretty sure you guys have been processing what all this means, what all of this actually means in dollars and cents, but five hours a week, 20 hours a month, 12 months in the year, that's 30 days. 30 days of time in a year from one hour a day. And that's solved right here. Um, so yeah, everyone with the sales responsibility should have access to this report. So if you go to the top of the report, hopefully you can see it a little bit, um, you can quickly identify what's working, who are the top performers and recognize them. Um, the other great thing about it is employees can see where do I stand, so I'm, you know, I'm third on the list there. I'm really close to first though, so I'm going to push a little bit harder so that the next time this report comes out, I'm in that number one spot. That's going to drive those behaviors. And you can see here, when something's working really well, we look at Nick's numbers, he's really rocking this, this category. What's he doing different? What is it? So 
The next step, of course, is yeah, you have these great reports, but you're going to want to know what do I do with this information, and that's where it gets most important. So these reports just identify what you have to do next, so that you can ask the question. So Nick, what's he doing that's working so well? Um, you know, talking with them and finding out what's working, and then taking that and carrying it across early on in the month, so that a product that you know should be really successful is amazingly successful because you recognize what was working early on. At the bottom of the same report is the the uh, what's not working, which obviously this is really important to note to recognize early on, so that you can make some changes. Um, you know, opportunities for training. When we look at Lauren here, she's she's struggling, and I would expect that she would do better in this category. So maybe her and Nick need to get together because if employees don't feel successful, if they don't feel successful in your organization, they're not going to stick around. So the fact that we can figure out who's struggling and drill down in to, okay, I should, you know, I think I can do something about this, or back to the regional manager. You know, can you go work with Lauren? Because I think, I think she's struggling and she's not going to feel great by the end of the month. She's not going to hit her numbers. I'm also going to look at the bottom of this for what products. Um, you can see the bottom of it over at the experts lounge, but what products aren't working. So if I just launched a brand new product and it's in my bottom performers report, I'm going to be thinking about, you know, how many of these should I really carry? Uh, what's going on with this product? Product and start to make some inventory decisions based on that. Another really, really important report is the refund reporting. Um, and again, this is this is already built for you. This is there in this in this view in this format, and you can link it out into employees, into stores, into products, and see refund as a percentage. So, in this example, we're looking at a pro, uh, refunds by product, and that product has a 12% return rate. But Ryan here, he's returning at 21%. So what this report you're going to be using it for is looking for opportunities for training, uh, quality issues, and potential signs of fraud. So you know Ryan's at 24% on a product that's only returning at 12%. What's he doing? Is it training? Maybe he's selling the product to someone who doesn't want it because he's just doing a bad customer needs analysis. So it could just be training, or it could be, wait a minute, what's going on with these refunds? Um, you know, maybe just a product isn't isn't living up to the hype that the media put out there, so it keeps coming back. Yeah, I thought it would be great, but it's it's really not. Buyer's remorse is really high. Again, you're going to want to you know make those inventory decisions based on this reporting. And again, just having this information in a format that's just so easy, you key in on what's important, what's working, what's not working, you can get into the questions faster. So it's not about getting the report and the information, you're now spending all your time doing something about it. And that to me is really, really exciting. <laughs> Okay, this is my favorite report though, because this is ranking. And the reason that this is my favorite, again, we've built this in by location, by district, by region, by employee, and you're going to want all of your sales departments to have access to these ranking reports. I can really quickly see where do I fall, um, how close am I. For uh, continuous improvement should, and personal best, that should always be something you're wa walking through your, with your employees on. You know, last year at this time, your sales were at this rate, you know, but you're a little behind this month. What, what can we do to get you up there? Uh, my favorite column in this report is the uh, four-month trend column here. I don't know. I don't know if you can see it, but the four month trend column that really quickly shows me up, 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 down. What's going on? What just happened to that location or that employee that suddenly, you know, they've been trending to great success and they just fell off? What just happened? Did we get a new store manager in that location? Was, you know, was our staffing changed? Did we change up the teams and suddenly they just can't get the same result anymore? That column right there is a huge indicator to where do I need to start? The other one, <laughs> thanks. That person that loves data bars, it's true. But the top one, so you know, you can see here's 100%, and I'm 83%. So, in a really easy way, I can see, you know, this is how far I have to go to be the number one. It's, you know, oh, I have a huge gap, I gotta work harder. But here's a really easy visual aid to how hard or how close am I to that top spot. Because let's face it, this is a competitive environment, they all wanna be on that number one spot. You can also see on the side there, there's the uh, green indicator up, red indicator down. Again, just really easy indicators that good, not so good. And you know exactly where to start. Some other really interesting information I got out of this was the 
how many of my top employees were here at this time last year. So when I've been working through this and building reports, you can really easily see who doesn't have any data from last year. And some of the times when I run this, I find out a lot of the top performers weren't here last year. What's happening to the people who, who have been around? Are they not as motivated? Are they not doing as well? Is the commission not as motivating because they have better bases? These are the questions you'll be asking because the information's there. Again, all of your employees, anything to do with sales should have access to this. And the last report I'm going to talk about is the growth report. And I'm going to, I'm going to quickly go through this, but make sure you, you uh, stop by the experts lounge to hear more about it. Because again, you can run this by anything, by product, by employee, by location, by district, by region. And you can see, what am I trending to? So a product line, what am I trending to hit? Where is it going to end up? It does the math for you in a simple calculation of this is how many days we're at, and this is what we're projected to end at. So early on in the month, you can start to see, am I going to hit my goals? Am I close? And down at the bottom of the report, you can see most improved and least improved. So just a quick, a quick guide into what's the gap between most improved and least improved. And here's our outliers, and now we have to do something about it. And so these are, these are only four of the reports that we've started building. We're going to continue to build them out. They already exist for you, and so you can immediately get them set up on email distributions. And I actually get one of the reports I built in my inbox every morning at 8 AM, just because I can. So I'm going to pass it back to Sarah to talk about future product development. Tracy really does love BI as much as I do. <laughs> yeah, when she said that she was willing to do the presentation with me, I said, awesome, because she really does love BI, and I love that. So, And I also like that all you guys love BI. All right, so on to... Um, just a little bit about beta feedback and then a couple new things that we're working on and then we'll close it up. So this is uh, some of the feedback that we've gotten from the beta clients that are currently using. We've run a pilot group for the last six to eight months, I would say. Uh, we have 10 customers using the product actively through their companies, customers of all size. And this is some of the comments that we've gotten from our customers. So we're excited to have you guys start using the product right away so you can get comments like this going through your companies. In particular, I like the last comment. The VP, I sent this to my VP of finance right away. Uh, he, he sent the growth report out the second that we sent it to him. So these reports are ready now um, and ready for you guys to use as soon as you start utilizing the product. So a couple new things that we're working on. Uh, one of the things that we're interested in after today is not only um, making the product available, but also feedback of what you guys think is important. Feedback's very important to us. Here's a couple things we're working on now. Uh, mapping is important to combine into the reports, right? Cust where are my customers in relation to my store? It also gives a really good visual indicator in a lot of instances. So we're playing around with mapping. Today we're thinking about our Q4 data, but we talked about external data sources. What about eventually having our demographic information plotted against, so geographics, right? <laughs> Be it would be a huge impact to be able to see how many people are in the neighborhood in the store that I'm in. So we're starting to work cross-team a lot on stuff like that. But this type of stuff, like we always need to know what's important to you guys. We see this as being important, so we're working on it. Um, this is also a vision of our CEO, but it also has come up with a couple of our customers, and that is if I'm an inventory manager, I don't want to have to run or have look at eight different reports. I want a centralized console view of those things that are important. For example, I want to look at open purchase orders, open RMAs, the inventory I'm responsible for, what's moving through my store, etc. the stores, et cetera, et cetera. But if I'm a store manager and I'm responsible for inventory, what are all the pieces of inventory that I own? So moving more towards a dashboard approach when we think about reporting. But in order to build that effectively, those customers in the room who are heavy customers of BI, we need to know like by role, 
by data what's important. Because just like any feature, if we just build it blindly, it's not going to be of any use, right? So this is something we're going to work towards, but we need feedback. So how can I get it? For an existing customer in the room, um, we're going to allow you to run both products in tandem. So if you're using ProClarity today and you want to move to the new product, there's no, we're not going to end of life it right away. You can run both products. Um, we'll run a demo of how to move reports over. I can even show you at the booth. The process of moving a report over is actually very straightforward. So we kind of envision you'll move those reports over as you feel comfortable while actively starting to use the new. For a new customer, just talk to your CSM about what it would take to get started. Same for an existing customer. If, if you want to start to move over, you know, what would it take? It is going to take us a bit of time though, because we just launched for the summit here, to build things like training videos, right? So if you want to be part of the beta group here, basically, you need to know that we're in the process of building launch materials and we need to take a little bit of time to get that in place. Long-term customers, you're likely wondering where the new data warehouse additions are, because we usually run training about that at the summit. The data warehouse is done. There are 17 new additions in this version. My most exciting addition is we have refund reason codes, but we also have inventory adjustment codes. So we can see how much inventory has been adjusted, units, and cost by reason code. Assign that, yeah, <laughs> so that's worth a clap, right? Assign it to a location and also assign it to a person, so it's all connected. So that's going to add a lot of value to figure out how much shrink every month, right? Awesome. So just in summary, um, the new features, highlights of the new features um, are mobile. So let's expand this down to the stores. Uh, accessible anywhere. We can now email reports. We can combine data sources, so bringing in our targets, bringing in our ADP and payroll, so eventually over time being able to do these things and a more flexible security system, just to close that off. Thank you very much.